How you guys doing? Welcome to Country Mash. Today I am sharing my long term review on the beloved GF3 PS AK 47 from Palmetto State Armory. We're going over the good, the excellent, and some of the ugly. Alright, so a lot of you guys already know that I am an affiliate for Palmetto State Armory. I post a lot of their links over on my Facebook and stuff like that because they honestly do have really good deals. And there's a lot of stuff that they make that I am a fan of. If you guys uh, follow the channel and watch all my videos, you guys will know that I'm not a fan of necessarily everything. I, I recently reviewed something that gave me um, a little bit of a headache. And I, even though I'm an affiliate for them, I just give an honest review. So... I've had the GF3 PSAK 47 for uh, quite some time now. I have a few thousand rounds through it. Um, I got different ammo through it. I've run different magazines through it. Um, I'm going to briefly go over the specs. I'm sure a lot of you guys already know the specs by now or you guys have already watched some other videos. If you haven't, there's other videos out there. So I'll briefly go over some of the stuff um, that I think is important. And then I'm going to go over uh, my experience with this rifle, uh, the pros and the cons, some issues I've had. And then I'm going to show you guys the wear on the internals, um, the parts that Palmetto State Armory has claimed that they beefed up and made a little bit stronger. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll go over all that stuff. So first, let's kick it off by briefly going over some of those specs and details. So the rifle that I received came with the classic polymer furniture, which quite frankly, I am a fan of. I think it looks really good. Being that this is the GF3 model, that means that this has a forged bolt, a forged carrier, and a forged front trunnion. The barrel is 4150 steel with a nitride finish, and the barrel is a one and nine and a half inch twist. The receiver is stamped, and it's made out of hardened steel that's one millimeter thick. It's obviously chambered in 762 by 39, it comes with a side rail mount, and the rear sight leaf can get you out to 800 yards. That's if you can get out to 800 yards with this thing, but good luck with that. A couple of things to note is that it does come with your standard slant brake on the front, which I have replaced with the VG6 Precision Epsilon brake, and it also comes with your classic AK style grip, which I have replaced with the Magpul K2 grip, which I actually really like on this setup. I kind of have long fingers and so I do need a little bit of a girthier grip. Being that I like the classic furniture, I left the handguard and to give me an option to mount a light, I just drilled and screwed on my own polymer Picatinny rail section so that way I was able to attach a surefire light. And all the other parts on this AK I have left completely stock. But if there was one other thing I would like to change, it would probably be the buttstock, just because it is a little bit short for my extremely long arms. So a longer stock would be nice. So now to go over my experience with this AK, um, the kind of accuracy I've had and the kind of reliability and some of the issues I've had, um, we'll just, we'll start it off with the cons. Um, I've had, I've really only had one issue with the rifle and it hasn't really been a reliability issue. It was a trigger reset issue. Um, I'll show you guys some footage right here of what was happening. Um, essentially, I would pull the trigger and it would get stuck to the rear and I would have to manually pull the trigger back forward to get it to reset. Um, initially, I thought I was having some uh, jamming issues, but then as I uh, was starting to diagnose it a little bit more, I had realized the trigger wasn't resetting. So then looking at the trigger itself, all that was happening was that the sears were a little bit rough and the sears that have to disengage for the reset weren't completely disengaging. They were getting a little bit stuck. So um, I highly recommend if this does happen to you, um, definitely contact Palmetto State Armory. Um, I didn't do that. I chose to um, file it down and smoothen it out myself. Um, to me, it seemed like there was so much engagement there that I, I wasn't gonna run into any safety issues. Um, but I don't want to recommend that to you guys if you guys don't think you will be comfortable doing that. Um, and then obviously, uh, doing that work yourself on a trigger, um, if you do uh, something wrong, you will have safety issues. So if that does happen to you guys, I do recommend you contact Palmetto State Armory. But for me and myself, I've been working on firearms for a very long time. And I felt very confident doing that myself. And I didn't feel the need or I didn't really want to contact Palmetto State Armory because then... Um, I was going to have to wait for the review and stuff like that. So uh, I just went ahead and did it. 
And ever since I did that, I have not had a single problem with the trigger. And as I have racked up the round count, I have had zero reliability issues. And I mean zero. Not one jam, not one hiccup. Um, the three, there's, okay, not three things. There's one thing I want to note that happened three times. And it's really hard to say if it was the rifle or ammo related. Um, but it wasn't a jam. Um, everything cycled fine, but I did get three Pierce primers. In fact, I have... Uh, two of them right here. One of them I lost, um, and I knew it was Pierce because you get a lot of smoke coming out of the receiver, and it smells pretty bad. But I do have two right here. So the primer actually got completely pierced, and looking at the firing pin after those, I didn't see any excessive wear or nothing broke, nothing happened. It wasn't jagged. Um, it still looks like a, a good firing pin. So it's really tough for me to think it was the rifle. Um, the ammo that it happened in was two of them um, were from Wolf and one of them was from Tula. So both steel cased, cheap ammo. Um, I have shot Hornady Black through this. I have shot the PPU FMJ um, stuff through this and I didn't have any issues with those. It only happened with the cheap steel ammo. So take that for what it's worth. Um, blame the rifle, blame the ammo. I'll leave that up to you guys. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and tend to think it was ammo related. Now, when it comes to accuracy, um, I just didn't even bother shooting uh, an accuracy portion of this video because this isn't an accurate gun, it's an AK. Um, the best I was able to get, and that was with the Hornady Black, was about two inches. I would say maybe like two and an eighth. It was a little bit over two inches. Not very good, everything else was three inches, three plus inches um, in that ballpark. Um, I mean, you have to remember, there is a lot um, hanging on this barrel on an AK. Just the AKM platform in general is not meant to be a highly precise rifle. So keep that in mind. Um, I tend to notice like I'm hitting my target better when I just use iron sights or a one power magnification. Um, maybe it's just because I'm not seeing the terrible group that I just think I'm shooting better. So I do like having a one powered optic on here. Um, after playing around with different optics, I had the three power. Um, I put a one to six for some accuracy testing in the past. I put some other stuff on here. And um, ultimately, I do like the one powered optics. Um, I think they just, a one powered optic is just meant to go on an AK or an oil optic at all. I think the iron sights work great as well. Um, my iron sights in particular, um, when you put it on the, um, I'm not an AK guy, so the, the name of that little symbol uh, is slipping my mind right now, but when you put it on your battle zero, I think is what a lot of people kind of consider it, um, between 75 and 100 yards, uh, my iron sights were spot on, um, so, and uh, they were also perfectly straight, which is something else I forgot to mention. It's kind of hard to share with you guys on camera but my iron sights are perfectly straight on this particular rifle. And um, I didn't even have to touch the zero, not the windage, not the elevation, nothing. I just left it and the sights were spot on. Something else that you should know um, when it comes to accuracy is just the trigger pull. Um, the trigger is actually incredibly smooth and I'm gonna show you guys right here And you guys can see that it's it's smooth, right? For for a cheap AK trigger, it's pretty smooth. My problem being that I'm a long range guy, I like my precise rifles, and I like to be able to stage so I know exactly when it's gonna go off. And this is so smooth, and there's no wall to it that I have no way of knowing when it's gonna go off. So I feel like it's it's difficult for me to get used to this trigger when I was shooting groups or trying to shoot longer range and stuff like that but it is actually a pretty good trigger. And being that this is an AK with a one powered optic, I'm not shooting long range with this. I, this is not what this is meant for. Um, I'm gonna keep this trigger on here and I see no need to upgrade it. All right, so now let's talk about some of the positives for the GF3 AK. First and foremost, this thing is just reliable. It just keeps chugging along no matter what I feed it. Um, even though I've had three Pierce primers, I've had no issues with it cycling. Um, it is just a, tough, durable, no-nonsense AK. It's, it's just a solid rifle. 
Um, I know some people, uh, well, I mean, a lot of you guys are probably thinking like, no, duh, it's an AK, right? There's some people out there who think, you know, if it's American made, it may not be as good or have problems. Or some people just think it's super cheap. Um, so it's going to have problems or just anything that Palmetto State Armory makes might have problems. Um, I, I honestly, this is a solid rifle and I'm just really impressed with it. Uh, the finish that's on the outside of the receiver is actually very durable. Um, the nitride on the barrel, um, actually, so I was uh, shooting one day and it, I just didn't notice that it had kind of gone, slipped back a little bit. And the, um, was it like some nylon or something like that from a shooting bag it was starting to melt onto the barrel and I didn't notice it till later. And I was like, oh, what is that goop on my barrel? And obviously it had hardened. Um, but because it had hardened, I was able to just like flake it off like really easy um, because the nitride is so slick. So that was pretty nice. Um, overall fit and finish, just super solid, like tight tolerances, no gap between the rivets. Um, I mean, overall, for just what you're looking for, for a good AK, uh, this is it. it. This isn't like a custom $1,000, $2,000, $3,000 AK with, you know, all these super deluxe finishes and parts and all that. But overall, it's a good AK. Um, and, I mean, that's that's probably all you need to hear. Um, the, the Obviously, what makes it better is that it's dirt cheap. Um, I think as of today, this model right here is $589. So under $600, um, this is with the classic furniture. Um, and keep in mind that does not include a cleaning rod. Um, some people don't like that. Some people don't care. Me personally, I don't really care. Um, I'll, I like to use boar snakes most of the time. I think they're easier. Um, cleaning rod, I get it though. They look cool. Um, you can pick those up at um, a lot of different places, really cheap. And um, yeah, so another positive in my experience, and it's something that I've heard negative in other people's experiences, um, is the safety selector. Mine is uh, just firm enough. It's not too firm and it's not too loose. It's honestly exactly how a safety selector should be on any AKM. And the last pro I wanna share with you guys is how this wears internally. So I'm gonna show you guys just um, a little uh, montage of some close-ups and some footage of the internal parts um, so you guys can get a really good look. This is what we got. All right, so being that this is a sub $600 AKM, it uh, it seems to be chugging along just fine. It has standard AK accuracy. It's not stellar accuracy, but it's, um, it's where it should be. Um, I definitely recommend this AK. Um, this is um, something that I can recommend. Would I buy this? Yes, I would, totally. Um, I can't say that about everything that Palmetto State sends me. Just because I'm an affiliate for them does not mean I can just vouch for everything that they send me to review. So if you guys are interested in this, again, I will have links down in the description box below to purchase this. Um, sometimes, uh, okay, well, a lot of the time, most times, the setups change. So they may not have this exact setup in stock right now, but they'll have maybe one with the Magpul furniture, now they have folding stocks, now they have they have all different kind of stuff now. So um, I'll post some links down in there uh, just to get you guys the general direction of where to purchase one of these, and it does help out the channel. Um, for those of you guys curious about how I have this set up, um, like I mentioned before, the Surefire light on here is a G2X Pro that I actually modded to be a single output. I am using a super cheap 
UTG scope mount to uh, as its mount. And then I, uh, like I mentioned before, I put my own Picatinny rail mount on this classic furniture right here. The K2 grip, I am liking a lot. I'm gonna stick with that. Um, the magazines that I've run through here, I've gone through X-Tech Tactical. I've used uh, two generations of Magpul mags. I've used the KCI mags, um, and these have worked very well. They're a little bit loose. Here, I'll throw one in here if you guys wanna see just the fitment. Um, a little bit loose, but I've had no issues with them. And I've also used, this is uh, just a Romanian um, drum mag, 75 drum, 75 round drum mag from Century Arms. And then I just look freaking sweet. I love this thing. I've had no issues with this either. So um, I don't have a ton of different magazines, but all the different ones I do have, um, it has worked great. Now the scope mount that I've been using to carry this red dot on here is the Midwest Industries um, Picatinny rail. I haven't had any issues mounting it to the side rail, although you guys will notice the finish on the side rail wearing off from putting this on and off. The optic that I have on here is the Holosun 503G. It does have the ACSS reticle. It does allow you to shoot out to 450 yards using the BDCs. And honestly, I mainly use it as just a red dot, but it's cool that you have that option to be able to push it out to further ranges if you absolutely had to. And then also revisiting the VG6 Precision Epsilon muzzle brake. Um, but this guy has really reduced a lot of the recoil. Um, there's, it keeps it pretty flat. And it's honestly not that loud. Um, it's a lot quieter than um, any of my other rifles and, and other calibers that have muzzle brakes. So... That's kind of how I have mine set up. Um, I will try to put links down in the description box to those parts if, if you guys are interested in any of those. And um, yeah, so overall, I like the GF3 AK. I think it is totally worth the money. That is just my experience. Um, and, and I'm not even a big AK guy. Obviously, you guys know I do a lot of AR stuff. You guys know I do a lot of bolt action stuff and AR-10 stuff and long range stuff. But... This is sweet. I really like it. So I honestly think you guys will not be disappointed if you guys choose to pick one up. So that's it for my review. I hope you guys got something out of it. Um, I hope you guys liked it. If you did, go ahead and hit that like button. Thank you to everyone who is subscribed to the channel. You guys seriously rock. And I love the support. If you guys aren't subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Thank you to everyone for watching. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. And I'll see you next time.